first off, I am not in the electronic repair business or whatsoever. Electronic is one of my favorite hobbies, and I have been helping out friends and families fixing their Aquarite and Aquatrol saltwater chlorine generators for a while now. The thermistor on the Aquarite board revision, one of five, eight, and older is known to fail. If you are having a different issue, then this video is not for you. Aquatrol users can also reference this video to fix a no display, no light issue. But if you are not comfortable working around electricity and are not able to perform the task, ask somebody else to do it for you or send the board out for repair or replace the main board. Please spare a moment reading the description below. Anyway, talking to the microphone is not my thing, but that would not stop me from helping others. Moving forward, please allow me to switch the audio to the online text-to-speech reader. This time, I will be working on an Acorite main board revision 159 with the display and indicator lights not working. Pardon the quality of the video. We all know it's hard to work with one hand while the other holding a cell phone. Place the black test lead to R15 post. Make sure there is AC power to the main board. As a precaution, insulate the metal part of your test lead with an electrical tape leaving the tip exposed. Probe the red terminal on the upper top right corner for 30 to 33 volts DC. You can also probe the thermistor tin solder pad right next to the red wire. Or the anode side of diode D2, whichever is convenient for you. If the 30 to 33 volts is not present, check the 20 amp fuse. Next, probe the R17 200 ohms resistor lead by the brown filter capacitor for 24 volts DC. Move the test lead to the other end of the dropping resistor R17. Confirm 22 to 23 volts is present. Probe pin 3 of the 5 volt regulator or TP13 for 5 volts. Next, probe the display board connector pin number 4 for 5 volts. If it reads 0, turn off the AC and unplug the display board. Turn the AC power back on. Once again confirm TP13 is 5 volts. Then locate TP14 and probe for 5 volts DC.
In this video, TP13 is 5 volts, but TP14 is 0 and the riser pin number 4 is also 0. Suggesting that the U13 shut went bad. And just to make it clear, the thermistor has nothing to do with the 5 volt supply. To make sure there is no downstream component that induced the failure, turn off the AC power. Switch the multimeter to measure resistance. Measure the resistance between TP14 and R15 post, and also riser pin 4 against R15 post. Make sure the resistance readings are nowhere near 0 ohms. Take pictures of the wiring connections so that you can connect them back later without a doubt. Remove the main board from the panel. As you can see, the location of the U13 chip on revision 159 is cramped. Removing the 24 volt regulator and the C3 capacitor will give me more room to replace the U13. On the other hand, the U13 chip on revision 158 and older can be replaced without removing other parts around it. Gently scrape off the conformal coating using a sharp object. Use a strong solder sucker to remove the parts. Unfortunately for me, the tip on my solder sucker broke the last time I used it and I am left with a weak sucker. So I have to remove the parts in a harsh manner. Heat the solder until it melts and gently pull out the capacitor from the board. Do not pull the regulator out with your hands, it will be too hot to touch. You are warned. Use a solder sucker to clean the through hole from old solder. My spare sucker is a letdown, hence the solder wick. But I have my way around and I'll show you later. By the way, my hubby is using a lighted magnifying lens, but he's not able to see through it because the cell phone is attached to it. He's just looking on the cell phone screen to see what he's doing. Now here comes my weak solder sucker in action. What a letdown, isn't it? At this point, overheating the U13 to remove it is not a concern. I need to replace it anyway, as long as the solder pad does not break. But I am prepared for that with some wrapping wire to complete the circuit.
Again, use solder wick to remove the old solder. The replacement chip must lay flat against the board. Make sure to clean the leads before installing the parts back. Without the solder sucker, my workaround is to use a needle pin to clear the through hole. It worked for me. Solder the regulator back in place with the marking side facing towards the U13 chip. Observe the C3 capacitor polarity. Although it is optional, I use acetone or alcohol to remove the flux residue to make the solder work look professional.
clean the main board and inspect your work. I now reinstall the main board ready for the test. As you can see, I now have 5 votes on TP14. And also on the header or riser pin number 4. Turn off the AC and plug in the display board. Now for the moment of truth. I turned it on and as expected, the display and indicating lights came back to life. I hope you found this video informative and have helped you fixed your Acrite board. Thank you for watching.